Hello, and welcome back to Zim Tutorials for Adobe Animate. I'm Dr. Abstract, and in this tutorial, we're going to take a look at Zim Parallax. Ooh, how exciting. We all love Parallax. Let's go to examples, see some examples. I'll do a search here. Uh, parallax. Well, para will probably find it. So here's our basic parallax example with scroll. So a scroll parallax example. So as we scroll here, ooh. Ah, we can scrub animation based on parallax. And then this is mouse parallax here. We're going to show you how to do mouse parallax in Adobe Animate. And go back up to the top. Okay, so this was done quite some time ago, back when, you know, just, just maybe before parallax sites became big. We did parallax back in Flash as well. Uh, we even had a, a class called... Uh, Hummingbird, part of our Flash Feather series that did parallax in Flash. There's our next one. That's another scroll parallax. Here's parallax domes. So these are dynamically created domes. Right now they're animating automatically, but now they're parallaxing to the mouse. Let's change that view. We got a lot of a lot of fat domes in there, huh? <laughs> but isn't that neat? They're, they're dynamically generated and they're going way back where the ones at the back hardly move, but the ones at the front uh, move more. We're not doing any Y parallax here in, in that one. Okay, well, that's, that's that one. We made a game based on those domes. Uh, cool parallax. Oh, yeah, that's quite the parallax. And there we've got uh, the Y value is changing the scale, and then this is changing the X. So you can kind of parallax any property that you want based on any input. By default, it inputs to mouse X, but you can also have an input of mouse Y or an input of whatever you desire. We did Zim VR that's much like this, except it splits it into two channels and it shifts uh, each channel um, relative to sort of your eye and stuff. And that's the most 3D I've ever seen anything out of all the 3D movies I've seen and 3D, uh, you know, headsets and stuff. Um, looking at Zim Parallax uh, in a headset was wow. Um, or not Zim Parallax, but just the Zim VR, which uses Zim Parallax as well. Okay, another one. Last one there. I thought we had more than that. Oh, yeah. Holiday. Okay, so this was a holiday example. And another scrolling one, presents, and then we have some presents that come in here. We can click on, then we can deliver, whoosh, into a shrink ray. Uh, yeah, okay. And then send, and happy sharing. Ooh, ooh, back up to the top. Okay, so um, there couple more examples. I thought, ah, right, I remember now. Uh, under collections, right here, there's the Zim bits. So we have some basic parallel parallax uh, ones in here. The Zim bits are 64 Zim bits, and you press on that little thing. Oh, I happen to be right at parallax uh, to see the images of them. I remember this one. So this is parallax with pictures. Isn't that cool? It's a snowball. Uh... And then there's another scrolling parallax, but a little bit different. So you might might like this kind of thing. Just looking at the pictures. Ah, there it is right there. Gorglon. So it's saying swipe the window. So here we've got a Zim window. Oh, saucer. And we're swiping the window right here. Ah, yes. And it's bringing up this uh, parallax scene with a saucer. And Gorgolon. Wow, cool, huh? You can also rewind that. So now it animates. Basically, it's just animating the window. And as it animates the window, it will automatically play the parallax scene. <laughs> That's reduce our space music, though. That's the dueling mu moog music, um, the Gnostics and, and, and me on two moogs. Like that. Okay. So there's another example of parallax right there. Let's go take a look at it though in in um, Adobe Animate, and we'll want to go out and take a look at where the docs are on this too. But in Adobe Animate, I've made a scene, and that scene has mountain, so a mountain or mountains, I guess, but mountain in the background, 
um, a tree and a sculpture. And we're going to parallax these things. Right now, if we go control enter, there they are, but they're not parallaxing. Okay. So, may as well pop out to the docks since I'm here. So, Zim docks, or if you're on the Zim main page here, there's the docks right there. And type in parallax, parallax. Just have a look. So there's parallax. We're expected to give it some layers, then some damping and a few other things there. Other parameters. Here are some examples where we've created some objects. This would be creating the objects in Zim rather than putting them on the stage in Adobe Animate. And then we're going to pass parallax uh, objects in. So an array of the object, the property, and how much we're changing. Another object with the uh, the object, the property, how much we're changing, but this one's based on a different input. So basically we're going to be passing in all that. We can pass in a damping or just leave it default. Damping is how uh, how quickly it's going to go to the parallax position. Usually we want some damping to make it look more natural. Okay, I believe this is a scroll parallax example and then there's information on methods and properties that it has. Okay, so that all looks good. Let's go into our code here, F9. Have we added Zim yet? I don't think we have. So um, we would go under more settings right here. And HTML, you would import the Zim shim. that It's in a zip file. You want to make sure you um, unzip that zip file that you get from the Zim site under the code section. We show you how to do that right in the very first tutorial. So have a look at that tutorial. Uh, we also like setting up these things, which I see I have already, but we're going to bring in a import profile of, okay. So that's the profile that we saved when we are exported when we first started. And there's our Zim Shim being brought in. Okay, we've called this one Zim 24 Parallax. And now we have Zim, hopefully uh, still loads, any errors or anything, F12, no errors. Okay, so... Uh, we're on our way, and let's pull up the, the F9 panel, or, and we will say Zim-23, 24, 23, 24, Zim-24, dash, dash parallax, and in here we will make our new parallax. We have two choices. We can make a new parallax, that's it, and then we can use you know, my parallax dot add and every layer we want to add, we use add, you know, layer add, add, add. We might be even able to put an array in there. But if you're going to use an array, and that allows you to later on add layers to parallax if you want. But usually when we're making parallax, we know our layers. We can just say new parallax. Oops, parallax. Make sure it's two L's, one R. New parallax. And in here, that's our array. So we're just going to pass our array right into here. Remember that those things were the squiggly brackets. I'll do both there at once. The first, uh, well, it doesn't really matter the order here, but usually we put the object first. And the object was this dot mountain. We'll do uh, comma. The props, mm, let's see, was it props? We'll go back to the docs and just have a look. Prop. So the prop is X and the prop change. So prop and prop change. So the prop that we're changing is X. When we do this, it's in quotes, the properties that we're changing. We're saying what property to change, not putting an X there, which would you know, try and evaluate the X. Anyway, prop change. So how much do we want this to change? The mountain in the background doesn't really change a lot. We can do 50, but that might even be too much, maybe even 0 or 10. Some, sometimes things that are way in the background, we don't even move them. But uh, we'll, we'll set it to 50 like that. And what that means is when we go Control Enter uh, and have a look at this, as we move our X, the mountain is moving in the X as well. And by default, it will be sort of centered. The X on this half, it starts moving that way. The X on this half, it starts moving the other way. Okay, but you can flip that. Some people like it the other way around. It sort of just depends on your perspective. But anyway, there's the mountain moving. Well, hey, now we can do that for the rest of these things too. So put a comma in there, another comma in there, 
and then move these tabbed in. And mountain, what else do we have? Tree. And the other one is a sculpture. Yes, that's a sculpture. <laughs> sculpture, we're gonna be moving the X's of all those, but we'll change this one to say 100, and this one 150. In theory, what that would mean roughly is that the tree is halfway to the mountain from the sculpture kind of thing. But uh, it's not quite, you know, what it looks like. But anyway, that's seems like, you know, that's pretty good, huh? Wow, we got parallax happening, mouse parallax happening in, oh, five minutes or so. Pretty easy. Now let's change it up a little bit in the Y as well. We'll only do the tree and the sculpture, make the tree and the sculpture move a little bit in the Y as well. So uh, you can see that we have to add, or we will see that you have to add one more parameter to, or not parameter, but a property in here to it. So we're going to do the tree again, but this time we're going to change its Y property. And we could also change its scale property. The amount of Y that we're going to change, usually not as much. We'll just go 25. And then here is the input. Okay, so it's a different input. This is input uh, mouse Y, like that. All right, this is input mouse X, but that's default, so we don't have to put it. So in other words, if you put an input mouse X in there, it would work the same way. But there's an input of mouse Y, and let's copy this one again. We'll be a little bit careful of our commas in there. We need a comma here. We don't really need this comma on the end, and we will change this one 50, same kind of deal, but this is the sculpture. A nice long word like sculpture, tricky to spell, all sorts of consonants in there, then uh, may as well double click it, copy, double click the paste. All right, so now we're changing the Y of the sculpture to 50 on mouse Y input. And we go control enter. Let's see if this makes a difference. Oh yeah, it does. So now as we move the mouse up and down, it's, um, its Y position changes. Ah, and we've got parallax. That's wonderful. Yay. All right. Remember that if you wanted to operate uh, with Zim on the sculpture, as in you know, click on it and animate it scale or uh, whatever it may be, rotate it with a dot rote, um, you would have to Zimify these. And that's not very hard to do. You would just say Zimify. Uh, yeah, that, that probably would do it. Just simplify this dot mountain right in there. And from then on, you'll be able to control the mountain with various Zim commands. Okay, uh, for instance, put a tap on it or something, and uh, that would work. If you didn't Zimify it, it wouldn't have a tap. Okay. I am Dr. Abstract. We've just made some parallax with Zim. Uh, that's very cool. And you can see those other parallax examples as well um, on the Zim site at zimjs.com. And you're welcome to join us at zimjs.com slash slack or zimjs.com slash discord. We'd love to talk to you there or in the animate channels as well and the animate um, forums. Uh, all the best. Have a great day or night. Cheers. Bye-bye.